there is egg and a sperm. The interaction of the two has led to creation of the enough energy that it led to the creation of what we call a mass. With this mass in its center, the same as, as you see in the hollow center in your core, has led to the creation of transfer of energies between it that has led to concentration of the field in the center. Then this center, the size, the shape of how this plasma will look. But the additional information which you didn't have is that now this center itself, now that it's a plasma, has to find its balance with the other centers. Where the position of these centers dictates the shape and the color of manifestation of this physicality. The egg and the sperm. The line of communication, the emotion of the man. The center is the soul of the man. It's the soul of the man which dictates the shape of the man in a physical life. And in fact, if you look at it, now the interaction of the souls dictates the outcome of the shape of the man and physical behavior of the man. This is one thing that you never understood and now you have to understand. This is how life exists in the universe. It's your soul which dictates the shape and the color of your eye and your physicality as a common denominator in shape, but the color of it, the strength of it, is dictated how your soul has been preset by the other souls to be that they find their position in their confinement of the universe be it the man on earth, be it another species in the universe. You thought you're alone, but in fact your soul is the theater of your physicality and its manifestation of its conduct. And its conduct relates and conditions your soul to position itself in the others. You call it the day of judgment. It's not your physicality which dictates the position of the soul, it's your soul which dictates the position and the condition of your physicality. And the emotion is a Chinese whisper between the two. If you understood this, you understand the next level of understanding of the totality. You brought the matter, you made a gans of it, you made it dynamic, you made the hollow center of it, it became the center of the field. That hollow center is in the brain of the man, as you call it, the soul of the man. And then each soul has to have its own interaction what we call magnetic gravitational positioning in respect to the other souls and what it gives to others has to take and when they see the misconduct or change in the physicality of others, they have to position themselves that physicality changes. You say, I was unlucky, this happened to me and you say, I was lucky, this happened to me. Had nothing to do with luck because the souls have already positioned you to receive what you did good or what you did bad or what to you was bad but in fact you made a favor and you gave freely to the others without knowing but the souls do not see that. They position themselves in what they receive from your bad conduct which turned up to be the tale of unexpected for you but it was reality of the conduct of the physicality. 
it will take you thousands of years to unravel the teaching of today. But those who do, will achieve peace very rapidly. And this is our target. I don't teach, how can I reach the man in the Amazon, who does not even have a candle light, yet, after millions of years of human race on this planet. But I teach, and I reach the soul of that man, without a single wire, through the candle of the knowledge, and the release of the soul of the man. Now you understand the difference. We haven't come to conquer, we have come to let there be no conquerors, and they're all equal. We conquer only one thing, the love of man, and through it we control his emotion, and his knowledge, and his freedom. Any questions? Good morning, Mr. Keshe. Good morning. Good morning, Azar. I have a... We can't hear you. Can you now? Very faint, or is it just me? I don't know. Uh... It is a little faint, but maybe if you keep talking, it might um, automatically adjust a bit. So uh, I'm going to talk louder. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I have a question. Uh, when we share knowledge, uh, from my experience, uh, I mean, I always shared knowledge in the past, and even is I mean, sharing knowledge in terms of humanity or uh, bring awareness to people about who we are. So what happens sometimes when I share knowledge with someone, after that, uh, you feel a good sensation, but sometimes with some other people, when you share the knowledge, suddenly I get this, uh, I don't know how to explain, I get this vibration feedback in my body that it seems somebody tells me I shouldn't have shared that knowledge with this person. I get so like twisted in my core. And I don't understand this. Uh, can you explain that, please? It means they are not ready to receive it. It's the soup bowl. I, I can't hear you, Mr. Cash. I said it's like the soup bowl. They are not ready to receive. Hello? Can you hear me? Rick, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Some other issue Problem. there with her. Issues in the background. Okay, Maybe so, she's not ready to listen yet. <laughs> I was going to say that that was the exact issue. If you're not you, listening to the person, to can you hear me? I was like, <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> okay. I said, Maybe that's why you couldn't hear because you're. I said, It's the same story as this bowl of the soup. You give, but it's not for them. They, they refuse it. I always taught something very, very first time when I knew my mission, and I explained that to a lot of people. I can give, it's only you who can refuse, because you are not ready to receive. But in the time when it comes, when you are ready, the soup is on the table to eat the soup. You cannot steal from a soul. You cannot steal from the knowledge by not giving. Your job is to give. It depends on them if they are ready to receive. This we see in the real life a lot of times. A lot of relationships can't have what we call a child. And you find out somewhere down the line, after they adopt three or four children, suddenly they have their own child. Because in reality, the soul is not ready, it's not confirmation of, even physically, I love you, I want to have your child, but in my soul, I'm not sure if you're going to be a good dad, so I prefer not to have. After you had three or four children adopted, surrogated, and I see you're so gorgeous with the other children, I say, oh, I can trust you now, and you get pregnant. It wasn't there that there was no egg and no sperm, and there was something wrong with it. It was the soul which could not accept the sharing of 
giving another life. And a lot of people don't understand this. We see a lot of families, a lot of couples can't have children nowadays. It's a huge problem. We blame it on water being contaminated, on radiation, on whatever you call it. But we don't look at something else. In the Western world, we see a lot of this. Ask, is the guy making love to make a child to the woman, where the woman she is, or with the woman he was before because of the openness of the misconduct of the past? This hasn't been understood because it's easy to blame the physicality. In the West, we were explaining one of our teachings, private teachings, uh, having uh, what I call partners, it's like changing trousers. And then you find out, when you want to fit the trousers in, it doesn't fit because too many trousers tried before. This is, the, this is the problem. When you don't, you feel they're not receiving, it's not because you did something wrong, it means they're not ready for it. Because to them, it's, it's not, as we say, the, 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 you have to introduce different kind of material or, and things into a cooking at the right time, otherwise it doesn't work. You can't put a potato before you fry the onions and the meat. You have to put in the sequence, when it's ready to receive it, you can put in the pot. It's the same with the man. You give it, it's there, the potatoes on the table, it's time to be right, and then it makes the right taste with it. This is the problem. You give the knowledge and you feel there is something wrong, it means they are not ready to receive, and the energy you get back, it means, it's not that I don't trust you, it's just I'm not at the moment needing it, because I can't digest what I have myself at the moment. I always say that from the beginning of my teachings. When I received the message to teach, I was first thing I learned in the process from masters of the universe of teaching, was not to force, you make it available. is for them to accept, and you cannot force it. I put it in a very simple language, and some people don't understand. You cannot say, I pay you to trust me, I pay you to love me. I have to be able to test, to understand, if I can trust myself, that I can trust you with what you give me. Then if I don't, I, I can't accept. You feel it, because it's emotion you give, it's not a food. You feel it, it's just, why do you get upset if you offer me a soup, physically, and say, no, thank you, I had lunch. But do you get upset if you give me uh, information or from your soul, and I say, no, thank you, because I already have enough in my plate, I cannot digest any more food. It's the same process. Any other question? 